Hey Internet, just some Retro Gamer here. Now, I know what you're thinking. Retro Gamer, it's not the first week of the new month. What gives with the new Retro Tech review? Well, as it turns out, as I'm pretty good at old video games, I'm a little less than stellar at reading the calendar. Let's be honest, we're lucky I even know what day it is at this point. And so, since I'm already lost in time, Let's take a look at something a little retro, and a little bit newfangled. The Activision Flashback Blast. The Activision Flashback Blast is a plug-and-play console chock with games developed by Activision, obviously, and released by At Games in 2018, and is considered the first of the Flashback Blast plug-and-play game line. I only paid about $6 at the time of this video, so I figured, what have I got to lose, right? Right. Well, let's find out together, shall we? Time to take a closer look at the Activision Flashback Blast. And there we have it. You got, you know, Wally Gator over there. He's, what are you doing over there, buddy? But I'm just swinging across the jungle. Check out my socks. They're spiffy, aren't they? Who wears loafers in the jungle? 20 built-in games, HDMI dongle. A little blast logo on there. I mean, that's what it is, so that's pretty spiffy. All right, turning to the side of the box here. Rewind, rewind your games to try and beat that tough boss as many times as you want. All right, easy guys. It's an Atari. I don't think we're going to be dealing with too many things like bosses. Easy to set up. Plug and plug the dongle into an available HDMI port. Power the dongle with the included micro USB cable. You know, I. I always figure that by now we should be able to power things over HDMI, so, you know, it's kind of inconvenient, but uh, whatever, I guess. That's just me. Set your TV to the selected HDMI port. Connect the wireless controller and have a blast. Ha <laughs> ha. Ah, these things do the puns. I'm just reading them. No wires, HD performance, save and load, some happy crocs, angry video game nerd swinging over a, a scorpion, you know, be expected, yada, yada, yada. Uh, wow. Ages 15 plus? Uh, I don't know about you guys, but I don't remember Atari games being that violent. Alright, let's open it up and see what's actually inside. I pre-cut it because I wouldn't want YouTube to ban me for using a knife to open tape. Something YouTube totally would never do, right guys? Alright, what's this here? Ah, yes, our black and white blast poster, so I can hang that on my wall. No, not really. All right, let's see, A is fire, B difficult. Looks like it's got all the switches on an Atari mapped to the different buttons on the controller. All right, I guess that makes sense. Oh, it needs to be paired with the HDMI dongle only once. Well, that's good because that would be real annoying if I had to do otherwise. How do I connect? Uh, confirm that the 2.4 GHz wireless controller connects to the HDMI dongle. Simply play the game. Hey! How do I start playing? Push buttons. How do I play two-player games? Follow the steps in the previous section. Press start on the first player game controller. Enter the selected game as P1. Press start on the second player game controller to add a second player. Note, P2 controller is not included in the package. I wonder if you can use a controller from the, uh, from one of these other ones here. Fantastic. I'll place you off to the side. Right there, that's nice. Here's our blast dongle. <laughs> dongle. There it is. It's got the At Games logo kind of perforated into the back of it. That's kind of cool, actually, and also probably keeps it cool. Can't imagine this thing getting very warm, but you know, kind of looks neat. Pop the lid off. HDMI dongle plugs right into the HDMI port of your television. Micro USB connection for power, and we have our pinhole-sized reset uh, thing. Yeah, at least that's what I assume it is, unless it's just you know to let the air out in case the scorpions try to escape. All right, go off to the side. Take a look at the. Blast controller, which is simply a 
basically, it's basically just a Genesis uh, six button controller mold. Got your D-pad over here. Feels pretty good though. It's got them fresh membranes in there. What else we got in here? Oh. And they included some some badges or stickers. And there we have it. Let's go ahead and hook everything up and see how this thing runs. Setup is super easy. Simply plug and play. Even the dog can do it. <laughs> okay, maybe mine can't. Upon loading up the interface, we see a pretty good lineup of games. We'll start out with Pitfall. Oh, there it is, it's Pitfall, all right. It kind of has a bit of an interpollinated looking uh, graphics filter on it, but on an HD TV, it actually looks pretty good. Uh, as far as lag or delay, no noticeable lag or delay, uh, which is pretty great considering it's an, a wireless controller. You figure, oh no, there's going to be some issues with that, but no, works good. <laughs> want to jump over you a second time. Oh no, I got hurt. Let's uh, rewind that. Pretend that didn't happen. <laughs> Okay, I kind of like the rewind option. That's kind of neat. Alright, there's our menu. Let's go ahead and save here. So this way if I don't make it, you know, we can just reload. Yes. Oh, okay. That would seem to be a long save process. Oh no, I didn't make it. I better reload. Load. Load is nice and quick. And I apparently lost sync with my controller because I cannot jump off now. Interesting. The sound effects are just weird. They don't, they're not very good. Uh, as far as the controls themselves go, I mean, they're they're def they're, they're working at the at currently. But the sound is just a little, it's just really bad. I mean, it's an Atari. It shouldn't really require too much effort, I wouldn't think. All right, let's see what we got here. Uh, Mega Mania, nothing to do with Mega Man. Let's do that. Oh, 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 controller dropped out. Controller's still not connecting. Okay, there seems to be a, a serious problem with that. Oh boy, you think gonna be good. Oh, controller dropped out again. When the controller drops out, it seems it just retains your last input. It just keeps going. I'm wondering if it... Oh, dropped out again. Oh my goodness. This is ridiculous. Okay, uh, apparently it looks like that your controller will drop if you give it too many inputs. That's kind of a problem for gamers who like to move around a lot in these arcade style games. This game doesn't really use the... And I already dropped connectivity. I am literally only a foot and a half from the dongle here. I don't think it's because I'm too close. I'm going to move back. I'm going to move back. My dongle has dropped. I got no connectivity again. And I'm more like six feet away from the television now. Yeah, if you rock your controller back and forth and then hold the fire button... Pretty much can guarantee you will drop out every time. Well, that's a shame because this is actually really cool and uh, man, I can't recommend it because of that. That's that's a real shame. Control-wise, the constant dropping becomes a huge issue when the action gets too intense. At first I was thinking, oh, it's probably just my batteries, right? But I tried my rechargeables and I tried a fresh stack of AAA batteries with no change in reliability. Actually, I was able to recreate the issue reliably by just holding down the fire button and rocking the joystick back and forth, and that almost causes the controller to lose sync every time. However, if you're more a uh, composed casual gamer, the controls work well enough with little to no lag and the buttons themselves are firm. The controller is comfortable, it's basically just a Genesis 6 button controller. Ultimately, it's not a bad little device for what it is. 
At a $6 price tag, what can you really expect from it, I guess? The 1080 image looks well enough on my HD TV, though you wouldn't think that based on the footage, right? And is a big upgrade from the original hardware. Though, to be honest, I would have preferred them to drop it to 720p if they could have got that progressive image. The sound is really hit or miss for the most part. They especially get a little garbled when you use the save and load state option. All things considered, though, this device gets my retro rating of 6 out of 10. If the controller would just stay connected, this would truly be a blast. As of this video, you can actually pick this device up at your local Walmart for about $6 which is actually a pretty fair price in my opinion. Of course, if you have money just lying around and have no idea what to spend it on, you can actually pick this device up on At Games website for around $30. Not sure why you do that, but you know, you could. To be honest, it's hard for me to justify it at the higher price point. First off, because of the issues with the controller. And secondly, I can't find a second player controller for this thing anywhere. I have no idea how much it costs or where they even sell it. Do they even sell it? Do they even make one? I can't find it on At Games website either, so I don't know what second player controller they're referring to, but either one, it's so rare that, like, almost nobody's got it, or two, it simply doesn't exist. And if it does exist, who's to say that the price of the second controller isn't astronomical as well? It would have been nice if they let you use the controller from another one of these sets, but uh, I guess that's asking a little too much. And that's all for this week's Retro Tech Review. Next week will probably be a game, most likely. Or I might just review the tacos I had the other night. At this point, who knows? Of course, in the meantime, big thanks goes out to my Retreon crew. You guys are awesome as always. Thank you again for sticking with me. You guys rock. I'm just some retro gamer. Keep on gaming. Till next time.